just gonna do the tuning forks that we did on myself this morning so the moon has already transited into Taurus about 20 minutes ago 9.43 a.m. UK time we managed to get the cards pulled in the void of course moon we've been up since 6.30 a.m. doing all our usual meditations that we do um, which can take a few hours <laughs> and then came in and fed our beautiful Zendaya cat so the tuning forks that we did on ourselves this morning after our few different varied meditations and after playing that harmonium for ourselves as well to clear the channels with a sounding through the mouth because Taurus is the ruler of the throat um, so when I did my nerve touch tie massage course the way the nerve touch tie massage works is you you pluck the ligaments like a guitar and that sends vibrations through the ligaments a, a very subtle gentle shaking now shaking is the oldest and newest form of healing so when we sound using our mouth it's the same principle it's causing a vibration in the vocal cords that go right down to your belly and so it provides a very subtle shaking on the internal system of the body so it's giving your internal body and your organs a massage um, and the lower down we can go it's like the so if you think of um, light and the way it refracts and color red which is your root chakra and this is also your root chakra Taurus rules your root chakra your heart chakra and your throat chakra red is the shortest I might get this the wrong way around because when I'm doing these um, or the altar that does these um, gets anxious and we get information and words a bit tipsy-turvy and back to front hence why we do these to watch them back so we call it the constructive feedback loop of information out of our senses and then back in of our senses when we watch it or we li and we listen to it back and different altars use different senses and then we can see where we've gone wrong and that connects the neurological pathways in the brain um, and breaks the pathways that aren't needed etc etc but we won't go into that too much so this is for us primarily um, and then we're also doing it for other people as well because it's maximum out output most ease or minimum effort but we change the connotation of the wording so so when you do the lower sounding through your voice you're accessing your root chakra you're grounding yourself in um, and that's the shorter wavelength and the what I call the thicker threads the thicker tubes in our body when you do the higher notes you're getting into your the heart chakra is the balance the midpoint when you do the higher notes, you're doing the higher chakras above the heart and that is the finer threads and then you've got the wide spectrum of sound that you can do with your voice but also that's tapping you into all your chakras and balancing out all your chakras now this morning when we're doing our meditation um, what comes out sometimes is the Fibonacci pulse reset now the Fibonacci sequence is a mathematical sequence which goes 0 1 1 2 3 5 8 13 21 34 55, 89, etc. So what it's doing is it's adding the two previous numbers together. So 0 plus 1 is 1. That's why it's 0, 1, 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 plus 2 is 5. 5 plus 3 is 8, etc. Now, we saw on Gaia TV about the Fibonacci pulse resets, and they, I can't remember, it was either the hands or the wrist or something, that they tapped together with the 21 over 34 and they're the two numbers from the Fibonacci sequence but they actually make up the golden ratio now the golden ratio if you look at flowers it's the it's the key to the universe it's that center point to all the universe um, where that spiral pattern outwards goes and the whole Fibonacci sequence is the spiral pattern and the center of that is the golden ratio so we do the pulse reset the Fibonacci pulse reset but because we're trying to find 
attempting to find our center of balance for the first time ever we focus or my body's taught me this we focus on the golden ratio the 21 over 34 so when we're making our sounding to release the trauma to release dissonance to release whatever needs to be released in the body it just happens um it starts by going uh, 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 so it counts up to 21 and then we'll continue doing the breath work and then it'll count up to 34. And it will either do the sounding on our out breath or our in breath. So our body led us to um, getting out our tuning fork this morning, which we haven't done for a while. And I'll just do the selection on you now. I'm going to do one over one, which makes one. One over half. One over two, which makes a half. Um, two over three, which makes a third. And where's that one gone? The one that I was just talking about, 21 over 34, which makes the balance. Now there's four numbers there, ranging from the half to the one, so that you've got the spectrum, the whole spectrum going on. But the important one is the 21 over 34. There's also four, because four is the number, a masculine number of structure, foundation, security, safety, and it's the number of Mother Gaia. So this is a healing that's going on along with this information about the moon transiting into Taurus. So here we go. You, if you might, I invite you to close your eyes if you want. If you close your eyes, you're bringing yourself into your internal reality. And if you keep yourself o eyes open, you're in the external collective reality. Um, I invite you to take long, slow, deep inhalations and exhalations, not controlling it at all, but just bringing your attention into it and allow it. It'll start off not so slow and deep but it will get there eventually if you focus your attention on your breath and i invite you to make sounding if it feels comfortable and if you're in an environment where you can do that so it might be for instance you breathe all your air out of your mouth sighing breathe in inward sounding is good it's a challenge but make you laugh i don't invite you to do that now if you haven't done it before and then and have a shake with it too and this is the easy way of releasing any trauma, physical, sexual, emotional, mental, heart, spiritual, past life, this life, whatever language or belief systems you have, that's residing in your connective tissue, in your fascia, in your body. And it does it from your subconscious mind, your body, your heart, your senses, rather than your conscious mind. And your conscious mind is a wee 5% of you, which is the part we're always attempting to stay in and understand. But that means we're in our left brain hemisphere, which means we're living in our past or in our future. And the idea is to live in the present and be present with the moment that is. And that's the right brain, the massive 95% of us. So we go to... The left brain, past or future, um, what gives us the ability to function in society when we need to live in the linear plane and we need to do certain tasks or integrate or socialise or connect in a certain linear societal way. But otherwise it's about living in the moment and when we can manage this we get the whatever we need to do isn't stressful and we release the stress from the mind, we release the stress from the body and we become heart centered. And what it's actually doing, not from the conscious mind, so it can be confusing because we're not understanding it in the conventional way or the way that we're used to, but we're understanding it from the body. So the knowledge is being understood and embodied into the actual body and that's then when wisdom is created and peace and harmony and balance. So here we go with the forks. <laughs> Pull the breath out. <gasps> and you might want to just breathe in and out of your nose. You might want to breathe in and out of your mouth. And you might want to circulate. So you breathe in for your nose, out for your mouth, in for your mouth, out for your nose. And, you know, or shift that up. <laughs> <laughs> get any places that feel stuck or congested or that stirs up emotion buzz it away Zzz. 
they'll hum it away. The next one I'm going to do is the high ohm set. 544.40 hertz and 272.20 hertz and that will connect and make a strong connection between the electromagnetic fields of you watching this video me presenting this video and it will be integrated um, between the electromagnetic field of mother nature And into that, oh, I've got a little burp there, burping, farting, they're all different ways of releasing toxins and energy, along with like screaming and dissonant sounds. Just adding in a C and a G, it's G384 hertz and C256, which is a perfect fifth. And it just clears out any lower vibrational frequencies, any negativity and it brings in balance and harmony. It changes your brave brain wavelengths from everyday functioning beta wavelengths down into alpha and then theta and potentially gamma if you're already pretty relaxed and can bring you into the similar state of meditation that can take 30 minutes, 45 minutes-ish. Lastly, well, that's I'm gonna do four now together, which is the A sharp 444.4 hertz. Again, that was chosen, um, the body chose it, and the mind decided to put the reasoning to it that it liked it because it was four, four, I don't know, it goes squared, cubed, I don't know what it's called when it's four to the power of four, but four to the power of four is 16 or eight squared. 16 is the number of rebirth. It is also made of new beginnings and unconditional love, one and six, which together equal seven, self-growth. The growth of self-awareness. And four, like I said previous, is the number of Mother Gaia. It means perseverance. So it's got four lots of perseverance, and we need lots of perseverance and patience to continue on the healing journey game sometimes. And with it, I'm going to bring in three other forks. Now, these are the weighted tuning forks of 32 hertz. They look like hammers. They've got big weighted things on the end, so they access the physical body more and will bring you into your body. 32 hertz accesses the the um, peripheral nervous system, the extreme ends of the peripheral nervous system, all your nerve follicles for your hair and your skin. Um, you've got 64 hertz, which it balances and integrates your peripheral nervous system with your central nervous system. So you're integrating and balancing your limbs of actions, your arms and legs, with your central nervous system, your trunk, your inner body. And then we've got 1 to 8 hertz, which is just general relaxation and balance. So I'm just going to tap these ones for you to...
so there's a bit of sound healing that started off there I wasn't quite expecting that so I'm just gonna read from the moon book but I will quickly show you the first card that jumped out was the card that we had the other day um, for the moon transit into Aries the 12, 12 the night 12 the scribe so that was the first card to come out so we're working on those energies again as well you might want to go and watch that video if you are curious and wanting those energies this card we thought we had already pulled out for the moon transit into air and that was given to us to the moon transit in Aquarius um, but it was actually the six of air which is a female rather than a male and the chakras so he's holding some chakras up the middle there they were actually coloured um, but it's about the yin and the yang the balance and so we pulled, we waited for another card to jump out and that was the two of fire so they're the well we're not going to read the scribe again as I said you can see that video but those will be the two cards and um, I'm doing them both because it's the two of air and the two of fire so two is patience 22 is intuition um, so a double dose of patience allows us to access our intuition better which equals four perseverance so on that number four again now I'm also going to give you the um, top of the pack because the top of the pack is like the what we're aware of what we're conscious of um, and that is the 13 which is a four again because um, what new beginnings one three creativity and expansion equaling four if you add them up and it's the queen of water now queens are action based and they express the emotion they express and water is your emotions and feelings so it's about expressing expressing your emotion ex taking action and communicating expressing your emotions and feelings with strength and courage, but also integrity and clarity of communication, keeping yourself grounded as you do. And that's a beautiful card there. As you can see, I don't know if you can see, her eyes don't actually have an eye in, but there's an eye that's open in her third eye. So it's delving inwards to your intuition. And actually in that third eye, you've got the moon symbol with the crescents on either side. So that was the top of the pack. Um, and the bottom of pack again was number 11, individuality, made of two ones, new beginnings, which equal two. So this is why I wanted to produce all the cards. And it's the 11 of emotion, intellect. Now I'm pretty sure, I can't remember exactly, but I think the 11 in the traditional tarot is the justice card, imbalance. Um, and she again has got her eyes no eyes in her actual eyes they're just blanked out but she's got the third eye up here and if you look on here i'll show you this card closer when we get to it you've got the scales of balance so it's balancing out the masculine and the feminine energies the yin and the yang so those were the the cards of the energy empowerment guidance now i'm just going to read a little bit to you about the taurus moon from Llewellyn's 2020 moon sign book. Taurus moon. A Taurus moon's energy is feminine, semi-fruitful semi and earthy. The moon is exalted, very strong in Taurus. Taurus is known as the farmer's sign because of its associations with farmland and precipitation that is the typical day-long soaker variety. Taurus energy is good to incorporate into your plans when patience, practicality and perseverance are needed. Shushing sound accesses your liver. And your liver holds the emotions of anger, resentment, frustration, and the counterbalancing emotions of generosity and forgiveness. And the younger alters just came out there because they get very excited because the word patience and the word perseverance came up. And the just as we've been using the words perseverance for the number four and patience for the number two, which is bringing all the numbers together that we just talked to you earlier. Um, well, yeah, we don't need to say any more. 
So Taurus energy is good to incorporate into your plans when patience, practicality and perseverance are needed. Be aware though that you may also experience stubbornness in this sign. Things started in Taurus tend to be long lasting, which is the opposite to Aries if you saw the Aries read, and to increase in value. This can be very supportive energy in a marriage election. On the downside, the fixed energy of this sign resists change, or the letting go of even the most difficult situations. A divorce following a marriage that occurred during a Taurus moon may be difficult and costly to end. Things begun now, that's, these are just examples, you can transit, trans, um, translate or transpire, what's the right word there when you turn skills from one job and put them into another job. So this is the, the energy theme, that's just a narrative to the theme and you can put it into any situation. Things begun now tend to become habitual and harder to alter. If you want to make changes in something you started, it would be better to wait for Gemini. And that's the next sign that the moon transits into, into a, in a couple of days. I think it might be early Wednesday morning, actually. I'm not 100% on that one yet. This is a good time to get a loan, but expect the people in charge of money to be cautious and slow to make decisions. The ruler is the planet Venus, and that's where the heart chakra comes in. The impulse is stability, and that's where the root chakra comes in. And it rules the neck, throat and voice, which is where the throat chakra comes in. Heart is the colour green for the lower heart, and the higher heart is the colour pink. Root chakra is the colour red, and throat is blue. Um, that's on the general, mostly, most common known chakra system. If you go into different chakra systems, there's different colours. And now I'll read from the Dreams of Gaia tarot book for what these cards, what this card means, and then we'll go on to the Two of Fire. Two of Air. Keywords. Duality. Polarity. Separation. Unity. Dichotom dichotomy. Dichotomy? Dichotomy? D-I-C-H-O-T-O-M-Y. Integration. Choice. Big picture. Two in the traditional tarot also represents choices and balance, along with other things. Key phrases. Everything has an opposite. Duality divides and separates. Polarity unites and integrates. When you create, you also destroy. Embrace an open mind. Nothing is ever black and white. A choice between dichotomy and integration. So dichotomy, if I'm saying that right, must mean separation. Sometimes both parties can be right. Meaning. The two of air represents both duality and polarity, and the theory that everything in creation has an opposite. Duality is the theory that two opposing forces come together to create a state of chaos. In this theory, positive and negative poles repel each other, and so there is a constant and ongoing battle between the two, where one seeks to overcome or be rid of the other. Polarity, however, is the idea that two opposing forces exist in all things within the universe not as separate competing forces, but as complementary opposing aspects of a singular whole. In this theory, one is just as necessary as the other. One does not exist without the other. And in some situations, depending upon one's perspective, one could be even said to be an identical mirror image of the other. So I'm just going to interrupt there because the twelve, the knight, the twelve, the scribe, and the knight of air came out first, which is the one that came out with Aries as well. And number twelve is complex stability made of one new beginnings, two patience or balance and choices. Now, complex stability is where there's because if you've got chaos and dissonance, then there's, there's there seems to be no order, no harmony. So complex stability is where there is an obvious order and a harmony. So this is talking about opposites um, 
and polarities where there's just the two. But in complex stability, with where my awareness is at the moment on this last almost four years, it'll be four years at the end of October since we had the seizures and became housebound and isolated basically. Um, and n now we, ba we are literally in contact with our gardener once weekly and then one friend every fortnight-ish. Um, but it was actually the 19th of August we last saw her. Um, and that's so that we can go inwards and get to know our individual energies of all these different altars so that, because it's too confusing when I've got other energies around. But for me to get to understand and know these other altars when I've got an internally deaf, blind and dumb processing model, I have to become aware of my actions and what they're doing and this is our process doing these recordings of becoming aware of that so that I can watch them back because when there's dissociation without co-consciousness co I'm unaware what they're doing I'm unaware of my actions of their actions um, when there is co-consciousness the aware I and there's a few different aware eyes that act um, in each time or moment so this is the aware eye that does these types of recordings there's the aware eye that does self-care there's the aware eye that does the care around the house there's the etc etc so it gets very confusing I'm still quite confused with it but I need to do these processes to get the information out anyone that has been following me or following these then they'll see here the progress since um, our psych ward experience back in February, which technically we believe wasn't the best thing to have happened because it was a, we hadn't eaten, we hadn't drank, we couldn't physically eat, we couldn't physically drink really. And we were stuck in the in-between states of consciousness, but we were dehydrated and we lost goodness knows how much weight. I mean, when we had the seizures, we put on six stone like that, which was an allergic reaction with Elos Danlos syndrome, EDS and the medication that we were on, we believe. Um, now, with all the meditation and the reprogramming of our subconscious that we had done, we surrendered to whatever needed to be done to for us to progress and for us to move forward and for us to integrate and connect and heal. Now, and this is what transpired, um, it got to a state where our body couldn't do it anymore. We were in the bath and we were... We were... We were dying. Our alternate normal nervous system was shutting down because we had no self-belief, no self-love. And we had been, our issues, our abandonment issues from our mum found washed up on a beach when we were four. Suspected suicide, but it happened, she was found three days after it happened. Um, I've read the last four months of her diary. Um, and we were also sexually abused or molested, whatever the right terminology is, between the ages of four or five apparently just a few times, um, but those boundaries were crossed at a young age, so we don't really know what healthy love is without it incorporating sex in the way. And it also happened when we were 15. Um, so abandonment issues were brought up. We had no self-belief, no self-love, and our autonomic nervous system was shutting down and dying. But we couldn't die because that involves to leave the body. And along with the reprogramming of our subconscious, surrendering to whatever was needed to happen, to move forward and heal and connect, we surrendered to no out-of-body experiences. Because Elos Danlos syndrome causes a lot of hypermobility, subluxations, dislocations. So when the energy moves through the body, it just causes pain, dissonance and chaos in the areas that don't have the ligaments to hold it together because it's a connective tissue disorder where you've got a malfunction of the collagen protein and it doesn't heal properly. So this brings in the vagus nerve. Now the vagus nerve is actually two nerves. Its next name is the wanderer as it wanders through every organ in the body and due to this we've correlated it and connected it to the crown chakra because each chakra system relates to a certain organ system in the body. So if it goes through every organ, it's going through every part of the body, then that to me relates to the crown chakra. Your left vagus nerve is the 
almighty, so important rest and digest vagus nerve, which enables you to rest and relax and recharge and recover and heal. Now, if that's not functioning properly, that can't counterbalance your right vagus nerve, which we've connected to your adrenaline, your fight, flight, freeze. So if you're someone that's experienced any trauma in your life and you suffer any PTSD, whether you've been diagnosed or not, um, examples of this are you get um, you get bored easy, you can't rest, you're fidgety. Um, I never knew we had anxious, I never knew we had a lot of these things. Um, so we're a really good survivor um, and it may be the same case for you as well and our purpose is to share our knowledge share our, share our experiences with with strength and courage in our vulnerability to inspire others um, to delve inside them too and to get away from the stigma of the shadow work and the horrificness of it and how we can actually bring fun and play and enjoyment into it when we tap into the younger aspects of the self, the inner child. Because um, everyone has this, they just don't have it on the spectrum or the extreme end that we have it. Um, and it just gets expressed, expressed in different ways because everything is on a spectrum, like the duality and the polarity we were just talking about. So, wow, as I said, we do these and we're very present in the moment and I have no idea what's going to come out. So this is channeling. It's a different type of channeling where people talk about they or something that comes from outside of them, which I find hard to comprehend at the moment because I'm very much in the body. By the way, the autonomic nervous system dying through a lack of self-worth, lack of self-love, um, lack of self-belief is epigenetics, Bruce Lipton, if you want to look further into that information. Um, so yeah, the body was dying and it sent us into this stuck state, in between states of, my eyes were, I was in a dream state, but my eyes were wide open and it ended up that I was kind of in my wee cumber home little estate area, so it kind of was designed event um, as a retirement home um, naked because I was stuck in the circular system thinking well the right brain hemisphere spirals and circles and straight lines and linear thinking just didn't work and I was so close to my home but I couldn't find my home way home because it involved straight lines and so I got picked up by the cops and had to get taken away to hospital they fed me more medication, which I didn't want because it's the medication that caused the seizures that got us locked inside more. It brings out the autism more. And But I couldn't communicate this to them because I was in, locked inside. So they fed me more medication. I lost three or four days. And I'd already lost, was already losing time and losing sense of self and reality. Um but also keeping it together at the same time. I wasn't losing sense of reality to be in a mental home. I was delusional from no food, no sleep. I hadn't slept for goodness knows how long. I hadn't eaten, I wasn't drinking. Now normally if that happens to someone, they get put into hospital, not a mental psych ward. But I couldn't communicate this to all of them because I was stuck in the very young alternate personalities of zero, one, two, three. And every so often I'd be able to get out and say some things, but my brain networks were still young and it's not, one's not able to get out adult vocabulary, adult language, adult structure of sentences through a two, three, four year old brain. So I couldn't communicate to them very clearly. In the bigger picture, because I believe everything happens for a reason, I needed to be put through the psych ward experience so that I then had a profound story to share. That's not the number one, Different. they don't come out in a, an order as such. Um, I've restrained someone when I worked for people with autism, which I then left the job afterwards because I couldn't share my thoughts or beliefs um, because the most important thing in these um, when you're working with mental health is consistency, structure, communication, um, 
being organised and to keep that safe, comfortable environment. So I left because it wasn't in agreement with my heart. And I probably didn't have the clarity and awareness to put it into words either then of that experience. So I needed to experience it from the other end because I am a super intelligent person. And the more I move forward, the more I integrate, the more I'll be able to share a profound story with intelligence to help along with the other people that are out there catalyze the change in systems that is currently taking place to a multitude of factors happening at the moment um, in societal nations and countries the world basically of what's going on after the coronavirus which actually started when I was in the psych ward um, so yeah I lost four days in the psych ward and I came round to about eight people restraining me and what felt like more people watching that needed to happen because there's connective tissue and fascia in the body, as I was saying earlier, Ehlers Danlos syndrome, EDS, is a connective tissue disorder, a malfunction of the collagen protein. So it doesn't heal properly. It makes it like, the best I can put it is if you've got PVA glue to stick two things together, then it can you can spread it on nicely and it will do a really good job of sticking it together if you leave it out to dry properly. And if it needs a few layers, you do one layer, it dries, you do another layer, it dries, and you get a really strong bond. Now, it's like blobbing on locks of PVA glue in one thing, so it doesn't dry properly, it's got gooey bits in the middle, and what's happening in the body is then you can't, it doesn't have the network and the structure in the area that's healed properly for the electromagnetic signals of energy to be able to travel through. And if it's in the electrochemical signals of energy, that's the circuitry system and the blood, which is well chemical rather than electrical impulses of energy. Um, and there's certain fa fascia that you cannot cut with a surgeon's knife. Now, if you look at certain pictures, we've made the connection. The, it's in the ligaments that most of this happen, where you've got your main parts of your chakras, your big chakras, because there's actually chakras in every joint. So your bit, and it's a, it's a, a chakra is a spinning, not a spinning wheel, because that's two dimensions. So if you think of a ball, it's a spinning ball of energy, a vortex of energy. So in the bigger vortexes of energies, another word is a black hole for this, is your where your chakras are, your main chakras going up your your spine. Now these need to be aligned but if they're not aligned then your body isn't going to be aligned for the energy to travel through your body properly. Um, so where these chakras are there's extra dense and extra thick ligaments and fascia which so because there's more energy it's meaning more pathways for the information the electromagnetic or the electrochemical impulses of energy to travel through that makes your body work or function. So we describe our body as host body need Deborah Coleman. Um, you've got all the different alternate personalities. And on the 19th of August, when we last saw our friend, she took us to the solicitor to get the paperwork signed so that we can change our name legally to Zanoni Snowflake Passau. So we're changing. That's another method of us to let go of our past and to change our frequency so that our past isn't defining our present. And so we can move forward into our future by living in the present and creating and writing our new narrative. Wow, there's loads of information coming out through this. Wasn't expecting any of this. Um, and why did we start it all? Because we were getting to the complex stability. So we're on the two, it's talking about the um, polarities and the dualities, separation, integration, balance and choices. Now that's just on a seesaw, if you're looking at it, a linear spectrum of a seesaw where there's a start and end and your centre point of balance. But we're not looking at it like that, we're looking at it from the point of view as a ball. So if you put the diameter into a circle, then you've got the centre point of that circle. But you have to think of it a graph. So now you've got a graph, X, Y and Z, but you've also got the minus X, minus Y and minus Z. And the center point of that is zero. And this is where you get zero gravity, zero balance point. There's different, your central point, a vacuum of equilibrium. There's different ways of describing it. But you could then draw a 3D, a ball through that, um, through those axes of X, Y, Z, minus X, minus Y, minus Z. And the center point zero is the center point of that. So for us, for there to be complex stability and balance and harmony we need to get out of the 2d perspective of a linear system thinking into 
the 3D perspective when you're drawing a 3D object through graph of a ball into therefore there's three versions x y and z but then you have the polarity or the duality opposite of that of minus x minus y minus z and there you have six and then we call six unconditional love but for complex stability it's the number 12 so it's that same principle that we've just described in the 3d dimension but it's times two to bring it up to 12. And that's then when you're getting up into your 4D, 5D, 6D dimensions, which is what people are talking about with the shift in consciousness. And I'm gonna stop there, because I don't really have any idea quite what we're talking about. <laughs> and I'm mad, um, very impressed and proud of ourselves for keeping the trail of thought there between all the different altars. So we are doing really well. So I will continue on with reading from the book and I will read the last sentence and um, carry on. In this theory, one is just as necessary. So I'll start again in the paragraph so it makes sense actually. Polarity, however, is the idea that two opposing forces exist in all things. So we would just say rather than two opposing forces, there's actually three opposing forces in, the x, y, z and the minus x, minus y, minus z, but therefore, but you actually need six opposing forces to get to your 12 of complex stability. Polarity, however, is the idea that two opposing forces exist in all things within the universe, not as separate competing forces, but as complementary opposing aspects of a singular whole. In this theory, one is just as necessary as the other. One does not exist without the other, and in some situations, depending upon one's perspective, one could be even said to be an identical mirror image of the other. And we're just going to add into that. So what that means is we always say there's at least six different perspectives to, to one thing. But if you then bring that into the 12, you've got at least 12 different perspectives, six on the positive connotation and six on the negative connotation. Consider a magnet, for example. It is made up of a positive pole and a negative pole. Without either one without either one or the other, the magnet ceases to be a magnet. You cannot remove a negative half from the positive half because there is no half of one and half of the other. There is only the whole. So we like to share our example of an atom. Atoms have your nucleus which people think is the center of something and it is the center if you look at it but the most important bit is the membrane around the outside and we think that carries the electron and the electron is the negative but even though it's the negative it's actually the one that's positive for humans because you need to have lots of the negative electrons to absorb all the chaos of the positives that make all your diseases and the positive is the proton the nucleus, nucleus, I think is the neutron, or maybe the neutron. I think you've got your nucleus, your proton, your electron, which is your ions. So you've got your positive ions and your negative ions, and then you have the proton. I don't know. We're not the, the altar that's into all of that isn't obviously out yet. Um, but you never hear the atom and complaining about the negative parts because it needs all of it to live in symbiosis. And the whole point is to live in symbiosis in this biodynamic bioorganic computer of a body vessel that houses us and it's to look after this vessel that we live in we need to think of it as a community a cellular community like a village like a town a city a country a nation um like the world because then we'll realize that what we're doing is not nurturing and taking care of ourselves as such but we're nurturing and taking care of all all the cells in our body, like you do with insects or animals. These people don't do with insects, they kill them, don't you? But like you do with animals and other things. Yeah. So there is only the whole. If you were to divide a magnet in two, all you would succeed in doing is one of two things. You would create two separate magnets or destroy the magnet. Because magnets, when you put them together, you either get that connection of where they get drawn together really easily or they repel each other and they want to push apart now what we found in our body with the healing process that we've been going through and the body's been showing us is the nerves act in the same way when a nerve is cut and split 
and it's far away from each other, it doesn't talk, but the closer those two ends of the nerves that was cut get drawn together again, there's then this like pew, and this real strong connection of them pulling together when they, they're in the right place to go together. And you've also got, if you think of a vortex, um, and you've got the white part and the narrow part in the centre, sometimes you've got the wide part and the wide part going together, sometimes you've got the pinpointness going into the wide part, um, and sometimes you've got two pinpointness going together. It's, but then we're getting into more, of, rather than just the singular plane of a nerve, you're getting into the surface area plane of a fascia train. As the theory of polarity points out, there are opposites. And while one has no identity or meaning without the other, neither is intrinsically good or bad. Fear is. Love is. Light is. Dark is. Love can be as destructive as fear, and fear can be beneficial. It can save lives and inspire the desire to improve or heal. It can also make you more empathic, understanding and appreciative. More often than not, both polar opposites are experienced in unison, for instance. When you create something, you destroy the state that existed prior to your, you, prior to your creating it. You create and destroy in unison. The planet of creation and destruction is Pluto, by the way. They are not separate states. They are the same state seen from two different perspectives. When you love something, you most probably also fear losing it. The fear might not be voiced or even acknowledged. It might even be denied. The DID, Dissociative Identity Disorder, which is what we were talking about earlier, I don't know if we named it like we did the EDS, is the biggest of denial going, by the way. And lots of people in denial because it's about your subconscious and what we pull away from because we like to be comfortable and we don't like pain. It is, however, still present. You were, It's present as in it's there, but you're not present with it. <laughs> we like that. <laughs> oh, shush. Okay, that's good. We feel, I like that. Okay, shh. You would fight to protect that something. Be, you would fight to protect that something because you love it. But you also fight because you fear losing it or seeing it harmed. Therefore, to love is to also fear. And to act from a place of love is to also act from a place of fear. You might choose to lose weight and exercise and say that you are doing so because you, you love yourself and so you deserve to have a healthy body. At the same time, it could be said that you choose to lose weight and exercise because you fear what may happen if you do not. Your choice is motivated, motivated by love, both love and fear. Again, it is the same state simply viewed from two different perspectives. This is polarity. With the duality principle, however, one force is always better than the other. Right and wrong, love and hate, light and dark, positive and negative, creation and destruction. All illustrate extreme opposites where one is perceived to be good and the other is bad. And the primary goal is for good to triumph over, to overcome the bad. Duality divides and creates two separate states. It creates a state of one versus the other. It creates a warlike state of conflict that serves only to perpetuate more chaos. Duality is black and white. Polarity is the entire spectrum. Duality divides and competes. Polarity unites and accepts. The two of air offers a choice between two paths. You can choose a path of dichotomy or one of integration. One offers conflict and the other offers peace. Potential blockage.
So because we're so present, we do so much meditations, whatever we read resonates and the body reacts to it or responds. Hence why all the information's obviously coming out at the moment. And we had a blockage that needed clearing, and so then that's why the body went into <laughs> doing all the sounding and whatever needed to do to clear the blockage. And then in that process, I felt a movement and a ligament readjustment in my left wrist, which we will have emotions coming out soon. I'm not going to talk too much now because the crying will come out and I don't want that to happen yet. Um, which is massive because we it was our left collarbone that we broke and it was a perfect break, but then um, we weren't informed not to lay down and we laid down and displaced it. And so it fused one on top of the other um, and our left arm and hand, which is present and female from some perspectives in which we work on, um, has become very detached. So for us, that's fabulous because it's um, integrated and become attached again. And as we continue to talk, we can now feel the pains and the aches and the tightness above the top of the left ear, which is correlating to my left jaw, which is where we had the jaw operation. And all of this connects into, again, the faulty healing of the connective tissue and the fascia, which is the Ellos Danlos syndrome, the EDS. Um, and the fibromyalgia comes into it because that's the rebuilding of new pathways um, to function and be able to keep going even if that pathway is not optimum but then it means you get double the pain the pain of the new pathway being built and the pain of the old pathway the optimum pathway that's blocked potential blockage the two of air reversed cautions against taking a black and white approach to life to do so is to move through life with a closed mind and eyes that only see part of what is. It is to refuse to look at the bigger picture. Are you taking a rigid and inflexible stance when an open mind and heart is needed? Understanding is required and that means accepting that sometimes there is no right or wrong. Sometimes both parties can be right and both parties can be wrong. Embracing the spectrum of colour that is life opens the mind and in turn reveals that there is more than just the right choice or the wrong choice available. For us, the only right decision or choice to make is making a choice in the first place because no decision that you ever make is wrong or right because there's always a lesson to be learned from it, even if it's perceived wrong. The only wrong choice to make is to not make a decision at all. So now we'll go into the second card and I asked please body for this one can we can we not well I was gonna say because this is my conscious mind talking now can we not um, do so much of the extra stuff and talking that goes on please but I want to surrender to the moment because I feel that I've said that because I didn't want the video to be long because it will put people off. But this isn't about people watching it as such. The first prim priority is for us to watch this back and to listen to the information that we're telling ourselves so that it can become more into our conscious mind and integrated. So I'm just going to show you this card closer. Hear the trickling sound we've got a little water fountain indoor water feature next to it next to this which helps clear through the emotions and this is us showing our ways to show that when you do the shadow dance with life we don't have to do it in the conventional young and freud and we you know all the conventional ways that at the moment of psychotherapy um, through the conscious mind because that's too hurtful too, and it re-traumatises and re-traumatises and doesn't do anyone any good but we're, this is our psychotherapy and our way of connecting and integrating and just in case I forget at the end to do this one I'm going to do this one up close to as well now this is lovely because they've both got their hands on their heart and it's red, yellow and together that makes orange um, I'm not going to go into that too much with this Fibonacci but that's two steps forwards, one step back so you go from red to yellow your two steps forward and then to strengthen yellow you go back to orange which holds all your emotions and your feelings and red's your root and stability and yellow's your solar plexus and your empowerment and they've got their hands on the heart and they're mirroring each other 
and they're looking deeply in your eyes. And you've got the red and the, the hair at the back there plaited in together, entwining. And the subconscious works on present tense only, no past, no future. And um, we're going to say something else then towards that. Yeah, it works on symbology and colours and numbers and etc. We work on numbers due to our autism. Um, they speak massively to us. So there we go. So we're on the two of fire now. Two of fire, key words, power sharing, mentorship, partnerships, equality, teamwork, mutual interests, ambition, control. Key phrases, align yourself with another, a power sharing situation. Two heads are better than one. And we just have to butt in there. We always wanted to be a fly on a wall to see other people's perspectives so we could see how other people thought because it helped because that's how we've learned by always mirroring ourselves to others and seeing what we like or dislike in others and reflecting it to ourselves but then we didn't have the other to do that for anymore but we don't need it you see because we have lots of different people and lots of different ages in this one host body and so we get to see it from a multitude of different perspectives from from one body if that makes sense and that's a real honour and a real gift to have that many don't don't have. Thank you for sharing that bit. I'm very makes us want to cry again. I'm very proud that you younger ones are repeating that back because that shows how your awareness and your brain networks and your understanding is growing up. What I've realised is it's the younger alternate personalities that hold that um have use of the body more so in the fight flight freeze I've always been a freezer um, and that's where most of my adult really aware adult therapists I've done four years of a two-year a younger teacher train yoga teacher training course our sound healing teacher training course we've learnt so much um, but when we started doing the yoga it brought us into the body more and as we walk both got brought into our body more to find our centre, it had to break us from our limbs and actions. So normally yoga strengthens you from your limbs of actions into your centre, your arms and legs into your centre, so that when you get to that central powerhouse, your body can handle it. But because our body was so misaligned in the first place, but in a beautiful way, it had to be time. Saturn time. We were just in moon time, by the way, now it's gone into Saturn time. The moon is your internal world, your subconscious, your feelings and emotions. It's feminine. Saturn is, it can be, it's boundaries and limitations and restrictions, but it can be breaking them at the same time and it's society and structure. Um, yeah. So, yeah, yoga had to break us from the outside in so that we could then build it and realign it properly from the inside out. Um, and I haven't found anyone else yet that's, that we we haven't found anyone else yet that's doing this we've we relate to so much we've got polarity therapy shaking medicine yoga yoga of sound the physical yoga yin yoga a younger yoga all your different like a yoga ashtanga yoga shadow yoga all your different yogas we've got your sound and your sound healing and your harmonium we used to play saxophone we've got the shamanic side so it's from the grounded mother nature of sound up to your indian and your spiritual sound on your higher notes without realizing there's chakra centers all over the world and i believe we've been to at least four of those chakra centers all over the world without realizing uluru as rock in australia is one bali's another glastonbury is another i'm not sure if there's somewhere near the nevada desert with the burning man festival i don't know where they all are exactly because it's different ones of us that do the information and as i said we're not all integrated and co-conscious and connected yet um yeah, um, and we love our maths. We've taken maths homework out of choice since the age of seven. 
um, Nassim Haramain with the Resonance Science Pro Project. We've learned massively from him. Dr. Levine that does a lot of trauma. He gives us the gentle shake or wobble of the jaw that's helped us. Um, all the Chinese medicine. We've done Steve Washington. Um, five days of power of Qigong. We've practiced Qigong elsewhere. We've also done the Lee Harris transmissions 2020 of the channeling, which has massively helped. And Elizabeth Harper, Harper of the Soul Intuitive, 44 day online meditation. Soul Shine was the first one, and then it's the 44 day sacred connections. And then we do that ourselves again and again. We're on the journaling now, which is the fourth one of the Soul Shine, and we're on our third round of the sacred connections. And we do Lunar Living by Kirsty Gallagher, which is living by the steps of the moon, which we do ourselves anyway and have done since, I don't know since when exactly, since we've been living in this house, but we had the seizures six weeks after we moved into this bungalow. Um, but we do put our moon water in colour therapy, kilner jars, red and green, one for the new, one for the full, shungite to purify it and cleanse it, and then chakra crystals. And we've been drinking that now for like at least three years, if not almost four um, so we have so many different facets and the, the multidimensionalness which the autism gives us and the DID gives us of integrating all these different therapy practices and putting them together into one. And the vagus nerve, boy, we love the vagus nerve and how that's tapped into it as well. So I'll, I'll read that again. And um, key phrases... Oh, we've got protruding discs in our lower back as well, L4, L5, L5, S1, which is where your kundalini energy rises from um so you know that's been one and we've had that since a four horse accident at this age 15 um which we foot got caught in the stirrup and that's where we our sacrum got twisted on all three planes the medial plane the sagittarial plane um oh god and that you know so you, yeah you x y z axes basically um so that's when those protruding discs happened. We are now 40, so it's 35 years ago. No, 25 years ago. Um, and our, we attempted suicide at the age of 18, and we swore never to do it again because we saw the impact it had on others. Um, and so therefore we've been doing this healing journey for 22 years, which is why we love Lee Harris so much, because he's 44 now, and 44 relates us to Bruce Lipton because it's the number for environment. Um which makes up a double dose of perseverance. Our traumas happened, sexual traumas happened when we were four, and together the two fours make eight, which is host body Neve Deborah Coleman's numerological number. But Sanoni Snowflake Purcell is now number 11, the master number of service, which is why we share, which equals two for patients. And I think Steve, um, Lee Harris also mentioned something about the number 22 as well. Um, key phrases, align yourself with another. A power-sharing situation. Two heads are better than one. A time for teamwork and cooperation. A struggle for power. Seek one who will teach much-needed skills. An equal exchange of energy. Someone who will help you overcome obstacles. Meaning. The two of fire represents partnerships and aligning yourself with another who shares your goals and visions in order to make an idea a reality. It symbolises a power sharing situation where two people with mutual interests work together because together they have more chance of success and achieving their ambition and achieving their ambitions than they would have if they worked alone. The two of fire represents teamwork and working together in a harmonious way. The division of labour is natural and organic, as each has different but equal strengths that, when brought together, create a stronger and united whole. It signifies an equal exchange of energy, where both parties derive the same reward and satisfaction. Do you have a goal or outcome you wish to manifest? but cannot accomplish without assistance. When the two of fire appears in your reading, it represents an opportunity to work with someone in a collaborative way that may allow you both to make 
thought a reality. Whether that person comes to you as a mentor who, by working with you, can teach you much needed skills, or a partner who works with you to have the workload, your shared vision and mutual interests will help you to overcome the obstacles you have found in your path that may be preventing you from moving forward. Now is a time for teamwork. In this situation, two heads are better than one, and two pairs of hands will make lighter work. Well, I think for us that just normally it refers to two people externally. But I think for us it's referring to all of the different people internally for us for this. But you may be different if you've managed to watch all this all the way through, and that is the case. I'd love to hear your comments. Potential blockage. The two of fire, when it appears reversed, can symbolise a struggle for control and power. Perhaps there is currently an unequal exchange of energies where one is vying to be the boss, instead of an equal partner. If so, this is an imbalance that needs to be addressed, or all of your hard work may prove to have been for naught or naught, but I know that is naught, but whatever, Trevor. Uh, take a look. Are you doing all the work while your partner sits back and reaps the rewards? If so, ask yourself how much you wish to be in charge and take the reins of control. Is there a genuine need? Because one or both of you have de deviated from the path you both agreed upon. Or is the desire for control purely ego-driven? In any case, it is now time to sit down and address any inequalities within the partnership and determine whether you both still share the same goals and ambitions. So, thank you for watching, bringing yourself to this and watching, if you have. I see a few people have come in and left because it's not their thing yet and I can completely understand that. Um, it was brought to our awareness and again we're going to want to cry now because it was something we needed to hear someone externally say and it was from the portal group, Lee Harris Energies group, private group. Um, not understanding as such because he watched our Aries, Moon and Aries transit video. Um, but could see the future thinking, the futurism vibrations, or feel the futurism vibrations of what this is. So, if you're still watching, then you're in that category, and your field, electromagnetic field, your rainbow electromagnetic field, your aura, your body is going to be taking in this information, even if your conscious mind can't. And there's going to be a lot of transitioning and healing that goes on, so... Take care of yourselves, nurture yourselves, rest as much as possible if your body's wanting that. Um, meditate just means focusing your attention on one thing. So meditate, meditate by singing, writing, playing the guitar, gardening, or laying on sunbathing. Um, eating food can ground you as well. Um, a lot of some of our altars eat the food for comfort but now we are eating a lot healthier foods they used to like to eat a lot of treats but now we have a lot of sweet treats going on um so if they altars come out where they want to eat to ground in then we're eating healthy healthy sugars like maple syrup and um organic raw honey we don't haven't eaten sugar for a long time um stewed fruit with yogurt so um yeah we and so yeah so basically meditate but meditate doesn't have to be the conventional with the stigma attached or sitting there cross-legged in on position it just means focusing your energy on one thing um and there's plenty of youtube meditations and all kinds of things that you can use for guidance there's sounding meditations there's visual meditations open-eyed closed-eyed um so yeah just look after yourself be gentle with yourself be patient with yourself and be loving and nurturing to yourself as this as if you were a, talk to your body like it was a child, a baby that you were bringing up. Um, as it talk to yourself as if, as if you were your best friend. If you're someone that doesn't talk to your children very well or your best friend very well, then your communication and language skills may need to be developed. 
um, we recommend the four agreements of the book of the four agreements. Don't take anything personally. Don't make assumptions and question everything. Be impeccable with your word and always do your best. Knowing your best isn't always going to be the same depending what your energy levels are like and how, whether you're in good health or not. Um, and we're going to leave you there now with three arms, three arms forward, no, nine arms, three forward, which is arm, um, three backwards, which is um, and then three forwards again. Um, so we invite you to join in if you so wish. Wow, we just had a massive release in our front heart chakra there. Um, just wanted to also share, um, so we've worked with a multitude of the senses there. The voice, shaking with the body, so that could be touch. Um, I would talk about the Fibrin Energy Pulse Reset, so you can do that on any part of your body. You can do your wrists together, your hands together, you can do one hand on one knee you know onto your chest um so that's a sense of touch um so it's voice touch we've done the sight with open eyed or closed eyed meditations um 
sounding through your ears. Um, another one there is you can put your hands over your ears or put a blindfold on over your eyes and around your ears so that it produces the sound inside of you so you can actually feel the sound and the vibrations in a different from a different perspective. That's really influential. Um, we did the tuning forks of OM, high OM set. We did the sounding of OM through the mouth and for the scent of smell through the nose we actually had our um, mother india fragrance which is all traditional hand rolled non-chemical and we had the scent of om on so there was lots of integrations there between multi all the senses as well namaste have a wonderful rest of day um rest of morning afternoon evening or sleep wherever you are and we'll see you on the next moon transit into Gemini within a, in a couple of days. Much love to you all. Bye.